Thanks, Paul. Um, for something that might be a little bit different, I think. Um, as an indicator, I think, of how the world or how how the world is moving faster in our space at the moment. Um, the title of my talk is different to what's in your, your packs. There's an extra bit in there, workforce skills, something that uh, popped into my head in the last couple of days and I wanted to mention it. Um, this is the title of, of this session. Um, this is how I've chosen to interpret it. I hope in the process I haven't um, lost the essence of it. I apologize if I have. Um, regardless, I hope some of the things I'm going to say will be, will be relevant. Um, I'd like to touch on, on four things. I'd like to make four observations in the next few minutes. I don't have very long, so I'm going to be giving things at a very high level. There are obviously great subtleties in all of this, and we can talk maybe more about that as the day goes on. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, some things that are necessary to, if you like, tool up Ireland's emerging ICT sector so that it can provide support, support to downstream sectors like marine renewable energy, uh, like those other um, 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 sectors that will sustainably exploit um, our natural resources and, and, and natural resources further afield. But the comments I'm making will also apply to, I think, the other downstream sectors, be they maritime safety and security, um, be they you know, aquaculture and food, fisheries, be they tourism or so on. So what I'm talking about here is at quite a high level. So I'm going to talk a little bit about clustering. Um, Smart Ocean is a cluster. I work for a cluster, IMERC, so I think it's, it, it's probably good that we, we talk a little bit about that. Um, I'm also going to talk about things that are both enablers but also opportunities. And in that space, um, I'm going to talk about something called convergence. It was mentioned earlier today. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I'm briefly going to touch on workforce skills, something that, that, that has come to mind a lot for, for us down in Cork recently. And lastly, I'd like to make a few observations about the market, where it is, and, and, and so on. So clustering. Well, he would talk about clusters. He works for one. Um, I think we're all pretty much on message about this, but um, I've been on a soapbox about this for a long time. I'm going to continue to pull out that soapbox because I think we all need to be reminded about this on a regular basis. We're small. Um, as Peter pointed out very, very well yesterday, the market we're in is global, and we have to remember that. In order to innovate, we have to work together. That's an absolute prerequisite. We have to work together because of the size, because of the market, but also to innovate. The obvious solution is to cluster. I like to go back to basics all the time. Clusters were first defined by Michael Porter back in 1990. That, to me, remains the best definition of what a cluster is. Um, why do we cluster? Well, it's down to three things. Clusters have been proven to increase productivity, they drive innovation, and they stimulate new businesses. Translated into, if you like, our ocean wealth speak, jobs, and an increase in GDP. That's really what we're about. As far as I'm aware, in the Republic of Ireland, we have two maritime clusters. One is IMERC, the other is, is Smart Ocean. Clusters that work, when you boil it down to their essence, it, it comes down to two things. What clusters achieve is they massively increase the efficiency and the effectiveness of communication. And the reality is, when human beings are communicating, in general, good things happen. That's the essence of why a cluster works. There's another magic ingredient that needs to go into the mix, however, and that's that a cluster needs to have clearly defined goals and objectives. Why? Because first of all, nobody has to be a member of a cluster. It's entirely voluntary. So you have to draw people in. If you're particularly going to draw in industry, they want to see where it is you're going. A good cluster has a unified vision that everybody has signed up to. Just to ground it, as an example, IMERC, the one I'm familiar with, we are fortunate, we are very lucky. We took a decision in the early stages that we were going to be a physically co-located cluster. That really deals with the issues around communication because you pile everybody into a small space, they're constantly running into each other, the communication happens. So in that sense, we have it easy. There are things you can do around structures and so on that also help, you know, openness, honesty, integrity and discussions and so on. And I mentioned that unified vision of the future. In terms of clear objectives, concrete goals. Um, IMERC has a, 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 an economic study which is out for international peer review at the moment. In essence, what it says is something like this. IMERC is committing to creating about 3,000 jobs on a campus by 2025 that will contribute somewhere between 950 million and 1.2 billion towards Ireland's marine GDP by 2025. We've annualized out those targets. That information will be more available later in the year. But the point here is concrete goals. Before we move on from clusters, just a few observations about Smart Ocean. Smart Ocean is an all-Ireland. It may, from you know, arising out of this particular event, become an all-island cluster. I think that's really important. That's very, very powerful. But there's a couple of things we need to think about. 
First of all is a communication strategy. In the short time Adele has been here, um, I'd like to publicly acknowledge the job she's done. Adele is terrific on the communication. But if you're dealing with an all-island cluster, you have a problem that you're very, very distributed. That's not a small challenge. It's by no means one that, that can't be overcome. But, you know, you need to think about how that's going to be done. My contribution to that is clone Adele. That, that's my solution to it. In terms of goals, from talking to Adele, from talking to uh, Mick and others, obviously because of the evolving policy landscape that Peter talked about yesterday, because Horizon 2020 is starting, like IMERC, Smart Ocean is currently reevaluing, redefining its goals. That's perfectly appropriate. That's, that needs to happen on a regular basis. It's a sign of healthy activity. But I would just remind people, get down to specifics. Get down to key goals, to key objectives at the end of that. That's all I'm going to say about clustering. I now want to go on and talk about something else. I'm going to talk about convergence. It was mentioned earlier today. We're all aware that doing stuff out to sea is hard. It can be a pretty bloody awful place to work. What that boils down to for, for business is that it means things are expensive. It's the bottom line. Doing stuff out there is expensive. The essence of convergence is what you do is you work towards reducing the unit costs, the deployment, the operation, and maintenance costs of technology out to sea so that the total cost of ownership is lower. That is hugely important in the context, for example, of marine renewable energy. It's hugely important in the context of, for example, deep sea aquaculture. Why? Because the margins are much, much smaller. Too often we fall into the, the gap of going, oh, well, you know, we'll do what the oil and gas sector did. It's completely different economics. We don't have those margins in, in marine renewable energy. So we have to look at convergence. Convergence really is all about pooling, sharing, and multi-use. Um, there's various different forms of convergence. I used to think about it only in the context of technology convergence. I now think about it much more in terms of operational convergence as well. Here are just a couple of examples I pulled out of my head. Um, the first one is technological, a marine radar that does multiple things. Um, the second one is a study that was done by, by BIM and another organization, um, and so on and so forth. These are all real things that are happening in Ireland at the moment. Th this is convergence in practice. It's actually happening. What I would love to see is convergence becoming a central strategic goal of what marine ICT is doing in Ireland. That we would look to mark ourselves out in the international marketplace as being the country, being the sector that's able to deliver convergent technology for the marine environment. It's hugely important, I think, from, a, from an economic standpoint. Convergence isn't all that easy to do. If it was, everybody would be at it. But, you know, there are certain things that are required. Can-do attitude, disruptive innovation, and an acceptance that we're going to, to try and do, do more with less, if you will. Back to the thing about communication. Convergence can only happen if the communication is really, really strong. There are some questions you can ask yourself about whether you are building a convergence solution. I'm not going to list them there. Um, I'm going to finish by, on convergence by just making this observation. When you get into the mindset around convergence, you start to see all kinds of opportunities. Some of them short, some of them medium, and some of them long term. The thing about convergence is you really have no idea where it's going to take you. Workforce skills. Um, this has become a big, big topic for us down in the Cork region in recent times. We have been getting a message loud and clear from some of the leading players in the marine ICT industry globally for about a year now. I was aware of it from my previous job where I worked for a navigation systems multinational. What they're saying to us is, yes, we need people with masters and PhDs. We need university and IOT graduates. We need the research and innovation engagement. They're all absolutely critical, but they're not at the top of our list right now. We have a more fundamental problem. We have a more urgent need. And that is, we cannot get access to YCT and marine savvy technicians who are prepared to travel. This is an enormously practical problem which represents, as far as I'm concerned, a huge opportunity for the marine ICT sector in Ireland. If we're going to build a successful marine ICT sector, we have to meet what the global market requires. Right now, that's what we're being told the market requires today. We've heard an awful lot about the potential down the road in the next you know, two, three, five, ten years, and all of that's hugely important. But there is an opportunity there today as well, which we shouldn't lose sight of. We're going to have to adapt to deal with this. There's a lot of conversations going on about how we might do this at the moment. Um, we heard Arlene Foster yesterday talk about Belfast's maritime engineering and innovation tradition. 
that tradition is something that we should be leveraging off. Many of you will remember Ireland's global reputation for providing uh, radio officers out to sea. What these technicians are is the 21st century equivalent of these previous skill sets. We have it in our DNA here, we can do it if we want to. The last point I'd make about workforce skills is I, I caught the tail end of something on the radio the other day about general IT skills shortages on the island of Ireland. There was some number mentioned, I believe about 6,000 are going to be required in the next few years. That's going to affect our ability to grow this sector here in Ireland. Now you can see that as a challenge or as an opportunity, but it's something I think we need to think about. To end, just a few comments about the market. Um, Google is your friend. I, I googled the phrase maritime ICT and the phrase marine ICT the other day and came back with very, very few hits. That for me is a kind of a sometime entrepreneur is a good thing, but it does raise some questions. It means we're early adopters, we're early movers in the space, that's fantastic. But it also raises some questions about the state of the market. Now, the challenge we have in the marine ICT sector is the market is emerging, but it's also very, very distributed. It has many, many, many subsectors. And in planning out a strategy, we need to think about, we need to define and analyze each of those subsectors. The rates of growth will vary significantly from one sector to the other. How are we going to manage all of this? Um, Peter put it better than I could yesterday. The other point I wanted to make, um, what we're finding with a lot of startups is they're coming to us and saying, well, we'll do Ireland first and we'll worry about international stuff later. That isn't going to fly in the maritime sector. The Irish market is just too small. So we're saying to people, you've got to be thinking outside the box. You've got to be thinking international from day one. Our markets are largely not on this island. And I think that that's, you know, that's, a, that, that's a way it needs to be put to people. Um, I came across this recently. Um, you know, one of the unsung heroes of clustering is the fact that they remove the fear, the distrust, the misunderstanding that happens because people don't understand each other's world. One of the great benefits that we've found in IMRC with the co-location is because we've all of these guys around us, a lot of the misunderstanding, a lot of the suspicion, a lot of the implied criticism and so on is gone now. We understand them better, they understand us, we understand each other's situation much better. That, I think, is perhaps one of the great values of clusters. And, and certainly, Smart Ocean is massively important in that regard. Um, you know, it's something that's going to become even more important for us if we're to leverage off these opportunities in coming years. Um, with that, I'm going to, to shut up, but thank you for listening. Thank you.